Today, we've got something rare to share with you. We're going to be talking about a former child star who actually grew up to be a fairly level-headed adult. Most of the time when we think about child stars, we think about the horror stories told us through the pages of the tabloids about people like Corey Haim, Macaulay Culkin, and Dustin Diamond. Shirley Temple will always be remembered as the perpetually positive child star with those golden curly locks and dimples who starred in more than a dozen films in the 30s. She helped bring optimism to Americans when they needed it the most. She was there to warm hearts and bring smiles to those who were dealing with the harshest years of the Great Depression. Upbeat song and dance numbers like On the Good Ship Lollipop from the 1934 film Bright Eyes solidified her position as one of America's most cherished darlings. She even earned herself an Academy Award at the age of six. People living through the Great Depression needed something to lift their spirits. Actually, that might be a bit of an understatement, but an adorable little girl with her loyal, loving dog companion was apparently just what the doctor ordered. Being America's little sweetheart didn't last forever. She couldn't hold on to her success at the box office either. As she grew up, the public's interest in her work began to wane. By the time she turned 22, she had already officially retired from the entertainment industry. But she didn't drop out of the spotlight completely. Not at all. After leaving Hollywood and show business behind, Temple pursued a flourishing and successful career in politics. In fact, she spent more of her life as a politician than an actress. This is the true story of Shirley Temple, an actress who traded the glam and glory of the spotlight for diplomacy and politics. She brushed shoulders with political bigwigs as a child. The fame Temple found early on in her life turned her into a global sensation. As such, she was often invited to the most prestigious and exclusive events. Even from an early age, she got the opportunity to meet some of the nation's most influential movers and shakers and governmental officials. Shirley had a few humorous stories from her childhood she loved to tell. There's the time she remembered sitting on what she described as the fleshy lap of President Franklin Delano Roosevelt when she whipped out her trusty slingshot and launched a pebble at Eleanor Roosevelt's backside during a barbecue she was attending in Hyde Park, New York. Shirley's peak box office years were between 1935 and 38. As she got older, fewer casting opportunities came her way. When she was a teen, she would do one or two movies a year, but like so many other child stars eventually discover, transitioning into an adult actor can be a daunting task. At 17, in 1945, she married the brother of one of her classmates, John Auger. They ended up having a daughter named Linda Susan together, but their marriage quickly fell apart primarily because of Auger's alcoholism and temper. They divorced in 1949, the same year Shirley gave up acting. Just a few months later, vacationing in Hawaii, she met Charlie Black, a man who had never seen any of her movies. Less than two weeks later, they were already engaged, and ten months later, they tied the knot. During the Korean War, Charlie was stationed as a Navy lieutenant commander at the Pentagon. Shirley and Charlie lived in D.C. for two and a half years during this time. While living there, she got the opportunity to meet many key members of the Eisenhower administration. The more time she spent in Washington, the deeper her desire to get involved with politics grew. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. And keep watching to find out how Shirley ended up becoming one of the nation's top diplomats. Shirley ran for Congress. Once her interest in politics was sparked, Shirley started studying political theory. At that point, she considered herself to be a self-proclaimed citizen politician, as she put it. As often as she could, she involved herself in political action. She worked with an organization called the League of Women Voters. She raised funds for the Republican Party, and she lent her support to Richard Nixon. Eventually, Shirley and Charlie settled down in Northern California, where they had their two children. They welcomed their son, Charlie Aiden Black Jr., on April 28, 1952, and their daughter Lori was born April 9, 1954. Notably, Lori would later go on to be the bassist in the pioneering American rock band, The Melvins. Charlie Jr. ended up becoming a real estate agent and representative for U.S. and foreign clients in international business activities. When Republican J. Arthur Younger passed away from leukemia in 1967, this left a vacancy in California's 11th Congressional District. Shirley decided it was a good time for her to get involved in politics on a whole new level, so she ran for office. She was the last person to enter the race and the only woman in the running. Shirley famously was quoted as saying it wouldn't hurt to have a woman's viewpoint in office. She described herself as Republican independent 
and pursued the GOP nomination. Despite being at somewhat of a disadvantage, she still ended up earning 34,000 votes and coming in second. She lost to Paul McCloskey, who later challenged Richard Nixon for the GOP presidential nomination in 1972 on an anti-war platform. McCloskey lost that campaign but served in the House of Representatives until 1983. Temple worked for the State Department for decades. Even though she didn't get elected into office, her run still impressed a great deal of people. One of her biggest fans was none other than President Richard Nixon. He saw a significant amount of political potential in her. So, in 1969, he ended up appointing her to the U.S. delegation for the U.N. General Assembly's 24th session. She took the opportunity to advocate for issues like refugee rights, the growing challenges faced by the elderly, and various environmental issues. This was just the beginning of her prolific political adventures. A few years later, President Gerald Ford appointed her as the U.S. ambassador to Ghana. When she returned back to D.C. in 1976, she was appointed chief of protocol, a post that allowed her to oversee the program training of new envoys. She ended up being stripped of her position during the Carter administration, but was brought back during the Reagan years as a co-chair for the ambassadorial training seminars. Under George H.W. Bush, she became the ambassador to Czechoslovakia. The position was only typically given to career diplomats, and she was the first female to hold the title. Shirley's childhood fame would frequently be brought up. There was no way to escape it, but she didn't resent that fact. She told Newsweek that Shirley Temple opened up doors of opportunities for Shirley Temple Black. She saw no reason to deny her past or forget where she came from. Secretary of State Henry Kissinger had nothing but praise for her, he told the Times she was a very intelligent, tough-minded, and disciplined woman. She may have first received recognition for her work as a child star, but her hard work and accomplishments in her political career were all well-earned. She ended up working for the State Department in various positions for a total of 20 years. In 1988, she received the honorary rank of U.S. Foreign Service Officer. Ten years later, she was honored again at the Kennedy Center Honors for her lifetime of achievements. In addition to working for the State Department for two decades, Temple was also extensively involved with the Commonwealth Club of California. The organization bills itself as the oldest and largest nonpartisan public affairs forum in the U.S. She spoke at many of their meetings throughout the years and was made president for a term in 1984. She survived breast cancer. In 1972, when Shirley was 44, she was diagnosed with breast cancer. Surgeons were able to successfully remove the tumor, but she had to undergo a painful and traumatic mastectomy. At the time, cancer wasn't the kind of thing people freely discussed. Shirley, however, was vocal about her battle and made it a matter of public knowledge. Her willingness to raise awareness for breast cancer is considered a major milestone of the movement. As such, she helped reduce the stigma associated with the disease. She ended up announcing the results of the operation live on television and published an article in McCall's magazine detailing her experience in February 1973. She died of pneumonia and obstructive pulmonary disease on February 10, 2014. She smoked cigarettes her entire life, but never did so publicly, in fear of setting a bad example for her fans. She was buried at Alta Mesa Memorial Park in Palo Alto, California. How do you think Shirley Temple will best be remembered? Will she be remembered for her delightful childhood musicals like Curly Top and Heidi? Or will she be remembered for her service to her country as a diplomat? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.